everyone live on Facebook and those that are in this room we've got a great topic tonight and one I am excited to share with each of you because actually uh, next year uh, Lord willing I would like to even go deeper with the topic that we're going to be uh, talking about tonight and that is being an on-purpose person uh, as we look into the Word of God for encouragement, let's go to Proverbs 4, 25 through 26. And it says this, Let your eyes look right on with fixed purpose. Let your gaze be straight before you. Consider well the path of your feet and let all your ways be established in order to write. Let your eyes look right with fixed purpose. Fixed purpose. You know, even Jesus himself was all about purpose, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. He uh, went about, in fact, mm -hmm. Luke 4, 42 to 43 says this, that when he left Peter's house, he went into an isolated desert place and the people looked for him until they came up to him and tried to prevent him from leaving. But he said to them, I must preach the good news, the gospel of the kingdom of God to other cities and towns also, for I was sent for this purpose. See, Jesus knew what his purpose was. And even though his heart wanted to stay, but he knew that he was directed by God Almighty for that purpose to go to other places. Tonight, I wanna encourage you, and I wanna stir up and awaken all of you that God's got a purpose and plan for you, and you gotta stay on purpose. Like the scripture I opened up with, that our gaze is out there on the path ahead of us. And what does it say? Our eyes are right on that path with fixed purpose. Now it's important to know what that purpose is and to awaken it and stir it. Why? Because even the best of people might want to steer you off the path and the purpose that God has for you. Now we know that this even happened to Jesus himself. In fact, uh, Peter tried to prevent Jesus' purpose by telling him that he was not to go to Jerusalem to suffer at the hands of the Jews. And I love how the word declares this, get behind me, Satan, is what he declared. He didn't waste a minute there. He, and I know those words were strong, but he had to stay the course. He had to be on purpose with, with the plan that God had for him. And you know, purpose mixed with passion, boy, it is just alive with possibilities. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want to also stir in you, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. But purpose, I was thinking about this myself. I remember at the church I uh, was attending some years ago, and uh, God had stirred on my heart. I'd, I'd been a children's pastor for many years, but I knew that God was stirring and awakening me in a different direction. But the children's pastor that they had hired after I had stepped down and moved in a different direction to move with, with women um, had resigned and moved on. And he said, Cindy, I just, I just feel that this, this is your season as a children's pastor. Now, if I had not been in God's presence like Jesus, just um, aware of God's plan, I might have just been sucked right up into that. Why? Because I admired and I looked up to my pastor and for him to want me. I mean, that, that right there, there was a tug at my heart to want to be a people pleaser. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not a bad thing to want to please people, but, and the Bible says we're to be servants of all, but there's a time that we need to stay on purpose, like that scripture in Proverbs 4, that we need to have our eyes right on with fixed purpose and let it gaze straight, not to the right, not to the left, straight before us. That we need to consider well the path that our feet will trod, that our ways are established and ordered, ordered right. So I had to tell in humility to the pastor who I love and respect so very much, that I, I have served as a children's pastor, but this is not that season. And that was a hard blow because he wanted me with the kids. 
and needs arise. And sometimes temptation to just fill that need with whoever can fill it that you think is qualified might be the tug. But like Jesus spoke and responded to, to Peter, sometimes you've got to stay firm. It may be loved ones. It may be individuals. And I remember I, I was very much um, in respect of my parents, valued my parents' opinion, and I knew God was speaking through them. But it was hard at times. And I remember after I'd already been married and with kids, that there was that tug to still want to respect my parents. But I knew that the direction that mainly my father, not my mom, was wanting to take me to was not where God wanted me to go. Now, I was emotional. Some of you heard this story, but he had seen me. I had lost some weight. I had let the cares of, of just concern of Pat being in school take hold. So I'd lost all my hair. And I was, uh, you know, sadly 50 pounds lighter than I am right now. So I was skin and bones. And uh, my dad said, Cindy, you need to go home with me right now. We're going to take those kids. We're going to go back home to Boston. Your husband, he can finish law school. But I knew in my heart if I left, we would not be married. We would not be together. And I know it was dramatic, but like Sometimes Jesus, when he spoke to Peter, there was a lot of emotion, get behind me. But this was my declaration, not so much to my dad, who I loved and respected so much, but to that devil to tell him what, what. And I said, if I die, I die, but I will die with the man I love. I entered into a covenant with him, I entered into marriage, and I'm gonna stay in this marriage. Amen. And dad, I'm, I'm gonna do it. I love you, but I'm not going to Boston. So my dad said, well, if he loves you that much, then he's gonna come out of school. Of course, he had to get permission to do so. He's gonna pick you up and take you home because I don't want you driving with those kids. The, you know, it was from Dallas to Waco, Texas. Now I felt I could drive. I honored my father in that. I gave him that to show uh, respect. But it, there are times when you're an on-purpose person you got to go where God has told you to go. I knew that this was the man I was to marry, but there are times that, hey, life isn't easy. You know, you stay the course. That's when your character has an opportunity to, to build and develop. So listen to these scriptures, uh, just because I want to encourage you on this. The Apostle Paul, he experienced opposition. He said that, he had been trying to please people, and if he had stayed that course, he would not have become the apostle that God wanted him to, to be. And Galatians 1.10 puts it this way, do you think I care about the approval of men or the approval of God? Do you think I'm on a mission to please people? If I'm still spinning my wheels trying to please men, then there is no way I can be a servant to the anointed one. Well, he said it pretty clear, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He said, do I care about the approval of men? You know, there's times that we need to keep our eyes, like I said at the very beginning, fixed purpose, gazed on the path straight ahead of us. Not turning to the right or to the left, but staying the course and not uh, getting um, deflected because our heart might want to help, you know, please that person. Because that was a real um, challenge for me in those early years, it might be for you too, the, the pull to be a people pleaser. And I've got two other scriptures I wanna throw out at you that really has helped me uh, stay the course. And that is this, Ephesians 6, 6. But don't put on a show just because they're looking as if you were a people pleaser. But as a slave of the anointing, do the will of God from your heart. So choosing to do the will of God from the heart. Not, not being an eye pleaser of man, but being a pleaser of the heart, being obedient to God. And the scripture in 1 Thessalonians 2, 4. For as we speak as messengers approved by God to be entrusted with the good news, our purpose is to please God and not man. So 
to start off with, as I kick off right now, being that on purpose person, we got to be a God pleaser. We got to obey God. We cannot allow just even sometimes the advice and direction of others to take us off God's plan for our life. So point number one, be ready for change. Be ready for change. Now, Jesus himself, he was going around and he would just like run into someone and say, follow me. Now, did they uh, negotiate, well, where am I gonna sleep and you know, are you gonna feed me? I mean, there, there wasn't anything that they, they did uh, other than obey. He said, follow me, they followed him. And there are times that God is directing us in that purpose that he has for us, and he wants us to just follow him, obey him, and not uh, second guess or, or try to reason and then lose sight of the plan that he has for us. And so if we will stay the course, if we will follow him, we'll experience miracles. We'll enjoy a, not only an adventure, but we'll have joy in the journey. Because there's joy when we obey God. He knows what is the right fit for us. Now think about Abraham. He was another one that just obeyed God. Hebrews 11.8 says, Urged by faith, Abraham, when he was called, he obeyed and went forth to a place which he was destined to receive an inheritance. And he went, although he did not know or trouble his mind about where he was to go. You know, there's risks sometimes in obeying God. Well, first off, not everyone understands the path that, that we are to take. Now, I don't, you know, everyone's different. But for me, um, there was such a pull to go to college. For me, such a pull to go to school. And every time I would come to him about it, he'd say, Cindy, my anointing will affirm your call. And now that I've grown and gotten older, I realize for me, because I'm so headstrong and competitive, that I would have just embraced that opportunity, whatever that might be. But I can tell you what, I might not be standing here right now. Because the pull of leadership, the pull of challenge of straight A's and being number one in my class, that would drive me. Because that's just who I am. But God knew for me that that would be a challenge and it would take me off the course of where he wanted me to go. But your life is different. That's why we can't compare ourselves to other people. We can encourage them, we can validate what they're doing, but we can't be there in judgment as to the decisions and choices that they're making. Now I am excited about what my daughter does. In fact, I'm surrounded in this room with all her graphic designs and layouts. And thanks to her, we have Facebook Live. She has kept us going with social media, our website, everything else. But was that the degree that she set out to do? No, nope. her degree was education. Not graphic design, not layout, not web development. But thank God she went to college because that's where she met and married the man she's married to today. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't understand what it is that God has for us, but he does want us to obey him and stay the course and be an on-purpose person. Because if not, if we become, like I said at the beginning, a people pleaser rather than a God pleaser, we'll miss it. We'll miss the mark. That's why we need to be still and know that he is God. So tonight, just like I said in that point number one, we need to be ready for change. He shifts it all the time. Why? Because he doesn't want us to be stale. He wants to change it up. He wants, as we embrace the anointing, the fullness of his plan, he wants us to get a fresh word, fresh opportunities. You know, I was thinking about it uh, last night, why I love Monday so much. And I think what it is, is I'm able to experience life with you guys. Even you on, on Facebook Live, I've, I've gotten to get to know you and your comments and your support as you, as you um, join us live. 
We're, we got a community going. We've got a family experience happening. But some of the other activities I do, my small groups, they're only eight weeks and then they're done. And rarely does someone sign up for the same group again. We're not able to build that community, but I'll tell you one thing. I know that he wants me to do both. Do Monday, that's long-term, and do these short-term opportunities. Because why? Not everyone's ready for a, you know, just an opportunity that's gonna happen Monday, Monday again, Monday again. And I think God knows, he knows how I like to change things up just because it keeps me alive and fresh. And I thank God for Tammy that's helping with our mini series because that not only changes up the topics and brings uh, upon us some fresh word, but it gives us a chance to hear from other people and to give them a voice and an opportunity to speak into our lives. So point number two, passionate pursuit. Passionate pursuit. You see, if you're on purpose with God's plan, there's gonna be a passion in there. There's gonna be a joy in that journey. Why? Jesus came that our joy would be made full. There will be joy in that journey. And with God just stirring and revealing those plans, there's an excitement, an anticipation that he wants to reveal to you. Think of the scripture in Ecclesiastes 5, 18. Make the most of what God gives after looking at the way things are on earth. Here's what I've decided is the best way to live. Take care of yourself, have a good time, make the most of whatever job you have for as long as God gives you life. And that's about it. That's the human lot. Yes, we must make the most of what God gives, both the bounty and then the capacity to enjoy it, accepting what's given and delighting in the work. It's God's gift. He deals out joy in the present, the now, and it's useless to brood over how long we might live. Now, I've been around a few people that, I mean, I'm sure you have, at that season of life, they're just ready to die. I mean, I, I've heard it, I'm sure you have, with our loved ones and friends. But God, especially as you read the scripture, he's wanted to awaken in all of us the importance of just enjoying the life that we have right now. Don't think about or worry about the tomorrow, what's gonna happen next. Just celebrate and enjoy right now. You know, uh, this weekend was a little tricky because I was in Albuquerque with my mom, uh, spending some time with her, also ministering at her church and um, just being really busy with that part of it. Then I flew in Friday night, plane was delayed, and it was time to hit the road of a young woman. I was her spiritual mom at the church I was at, was getting married. And I, I knew I needed to be there. I remember when she first walked in the church. She came and we were having a worship night. She sat on our row and everything within Pat and I, we just looked at each other and we knew we gotta reach out to this one right here. And my husband, he introduced himself. I hugged on her. I said, I love Facebook. Do you like Facebook? I love Facebook. We became Facebook friends and we just began to speak in our life. And that night, she made a rededication of her life to Christ and got water baptized. But then I kept reaching out to her. Hey, you want to sit with us at church? And it was a constant pursuit. And finally, she came back again and then again. And ultimately, she was in leadership at the church. But sometimes in that pursuit, in that passion that, that is there, you gotta stay the course. Passionate pursuit. God told me, Cindy, you gotta keep reaching out to her. You gotta keep just encouraging her because I've got a plan for her. She just doesn't know it yet. But her life is just getting started. And in that, I look at all that God has done. She ended up moving to North Carolina to be near family, to be on staff, to work at a church there. And she went there a month and she met her man. Uh, it was just exciting, you know, all the time that she was here, young, professional, late 30s, but kept saying, Cindy, my desire, is, I wanna get married. When is that gonna happen? And I would tell her, I said, just be that on 
purpose person. Don't look to the right or to the left. Don't, I mean, yeah, I'm sure, you know, you're, everything within you is like, well, what guy's visiting church today? But instead, <laughs> right? Yeah, checking it out. I said, you be about God's business right. and he will That's give right. you the desires of your heart. Now, she thought it was right here in D.C., but you know what? God's got it, right? He was shaping and grooming, and I saw a maturity of character that was being developed. And when she got down to North Carolina, she said, Cindy, I can't believe it. I'm dating every night. And I finally said, you know what? I need a night off from dating. <laughs> you know what? Overflow. Because when you're about God's business, he's about your business. He will awaken the fulfillment of those secret petitions of your heart. But you know what? You got to be about his business. Amen. You got to be on purpose. And you can't be a people pleaser. You can't uh, allow, you know, what you think that path should look like. You need to follow him. And when you follow him, he brings the change, the shift. Now, did she want to move to North Carolina? She swore she wasn't ever going back home. Believe me, Camp Lejeune, I, it's a small little town. And I could see why she was thinking, oh, I don't want to go back here. But God, in his way, told her she needed to go back home. And in that place, it was because he, at such a time as this, had prepared that man for her. And oh my gosh, I just cried at this wedding as they shared their faith and commitment one to another. I'm like, God, you are just so good, so good. So as I came back, Crystal, my wonderful daughter, if you're watching, hello, hello. She had a reunion up here and was seeing her uh, brother-in-law and family as well. And so she got to see Pat on Thursday. And I'm like, what? I'm the one that likes the grandkids. What's all this about, right? And so Crystal's like, Mom, it's good that we're able to spend time with Dad, right? Passionate pursuit. So I'm all about doing what God needs me to do while in Albuquerque. And then God had a little surprise. It just so happened the place they were going to stay at on Thursday, on Saturday had no electricity. Mm -hmm. She told her husband, you know what, let's go back home to Mom's place because there's electricity there. So they went home. To our place we were still at Camp Lejeune for this wedding but they got to do church and she texted me and said mom when are you coming in trust me I got up real early that day and told Pat we got to hit the road I got those kiddos back at the house did I feel like it no I was tired <laughs> I had a lot to do especially getting ready for tonight but uh, as soon as I walked in that door, I told Crystal, give me a minute. I got to get this, 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 and this. And then I will watch and spend time with these kids. And you and Andrew, you can just leave. And in that passionate pursuit, I had the most wonderful time reading with those kids, praying over them, prophesying into their life. Their heart just ate it up. It was just so precious to sing over them. And then this morning before I went to work, when you have passionate pursuit, you don't waste a moment. I got up with them this morning. I got my bath, got my clothes on. And those kids, I could hear the pitter patter. They're like, Gigi, I'm like, here I am. We did morning devotion. We did prayer. Did they complain? Are you kidding? They're just excited. When you're passionate about your purpose, God will work on their hearts. It was so much fun. We huddled up as I was finishing up, you know, just getting all everything ready to walk out the door. I said, well, let's huddle up. Here's Noah that's two, and there's Caleb that's five. There's his sis. They say sissy that's seven. And we huddled up in our circle. We held our hands. We prayed. When I said amen, Caleb says, amen. Yeah. And Noah goes, amen. Because he's just a little guy learning how to say it, right? But he was like, <laughs> just a little sweetheart but you know what passionate pursuit when you're excited about what God has asked of you to do you may be tired of that journey but God will awaken and he will sustain you I am surprised at what all we got to do, to do last night after being on the road seven hours to get up here but God 
is there. He will provide the joy that is your strength so that you won't fail in that journey and in that path. Why? Because when you are on purpose with what his purpose is, he will bless your efforts. Amen. Think about um, and just consider this passionate pursuit. Passion, what does it mean? It means compelled to do a thing with intense feelings to pursue that one purpose with passion. But in order to have passion, we must enjoy what we do. In fact, this speaks to me so much. Um, I'm hopeful that next year we're, I'm going to offer some uh, workshops to help people connect their passion with their purpose. Why? Because I'm finding too many people doing things and they're not happy. There's no joy in that. And God, he sent his son Jesus that our joy could be made full. He wants us to have passion in all that we do. Why? Because it's, it ignites other people. Think about this scripture um, as well. When you look at Jesus himself, it said, well, actually, before I get into that, let's talk about the word passion. When you look it up, one of the definitions describes the, the struggle, that long suffering that Jesus endured between that last supper and the death. And we know that such as the passion play, passion. There is sometimes that there's joy in the journey, but there are other times there's the struggle in the journey. But in it all, it's all for his purpose. And I was looking at passion in scriptures throughout the New Testament, and it was interesting to me how often with various translations, passionate patience came up time and time again. Sometimes as the, that on purpose person in the journey of life, you gotta have some patience to stay the course, to keep your head lifted up, to watch your declaration, to put sometimes one foot ahead of the other. Why? Because you're not feeling it at that moment, but you know your feelings will finally line up, but you gotta watch what you're thinking at that point. So passionate pursuit is key. And then enthusiasm is important as well. And that in itself, it means to be creative, alive, and active. Active. We know that faith without works is dead. So when you're enthusiastic about something, you're gonna be active in your words, in your actions, and in your deeds. Now I put in here for those that have the notes, kind of my little thing, some of you know, I, I have this little, that works for me. I don't get out of that bed until I've done my declarations, I've had my Bible, but I'll tell you what, there's something, you know, Pat, because he goes to bed so early, he can just pop right up because he's had like 10 hours sleep, right? <laughs> Me, I mean, who knows how much sleep I've gotten. And it's just amazing, I, I try, I really try, I'm working on this. From 10, I go to bed at, well, at midnight, let's say, <laughs> or Pat's at 10, I'm a midnight, and I try to get up at, uh, you know, at seven, uh, or sometimes sooner, but um, God will honor your desire. So I was with, my mom, as I mentioned, in Albuquerque, and I met some of uh, my dad's uh, friends. He has this club, as he says, and the men get together on Tuesday for an hour and talk about men's stuff, right? So they're all coming in the house, and uh, they we were talking, and uh, actually I had just been up since three that morning to get on the airplane to get to Albuquerque. He said, really, how much sleep have you had? I said, well, I don't know, let me check. So I pulled up my app because I had my Fitbit here. And I said, well, I had three and a half hours sleep. He said, wow, you don't look like you've had three and a half hours sleep. Let me check your sleep pattern. He says, I cannot believe it. He said, you see this right here, this deep sleep? That's where your brain clean, cleanses out all that stuff, all the, the nasty stuff, all the trash. That's unheard of, almost 20%. That's really amazing. I said, that's the God we serve, right? You see, he knows that in your weakness, his strength is perfected. 
And you know, I only had so much time because I ministered on Monday and then, you know, we had a full night of it. I couldn't just get right to bed. I still had to pack and finish <clears throat> up and then get to bed and get up at three in the morning. God knew what I had to get done. But in that, it's just amazing when you look at the stats right there, the deep sleep, the REM, it was for that small amount of time, it was packed full with what I needed to be able to keep it on going throughout that next day. Because mind you, it's a two hour difference in Albuquerque, right? So enthusiasm, when you're about God's business, you have enthusiasm for that journey. And then as I uh, finish up here, I found this quote, I love it. A positive mind, it leads to an energetic and enthusiastic life, a positive mind. So when you, when you wake up in the morning, like I said, when you stir and get yourself going for the day, for me, I start out, this is the day that the Lord hath made. You know, I will rejoice and be glad in it. But I have certain other declarations, Lord, I, I thank you, you're gonna use me this day to fulfill your purpose. Amen. I know that, uh, you know, this is the day filled with possibilities. And so I'm stirring myself up. Do I feel awake yet? Not at first, but I'll tell you what, that body lines up in due course. Why? Because when you pursue the purpose, when you're passionate and enthusiastic, your feelings will finally line up. But whether they do or not, doesn't matter. Because you're gonna stay the course. You are gonna be on purpose. As we said in that opening scripture, your eyes, like it says in Proverbs, your eyes are going to be straight before you. And then lastly, don't waste today. Don't waste today. I challenge you, don't waste today. Live it fully and do it on purpose. Everything within me wanted to say on Sunday, boy, I need a nap. Because as we were driving back, I had files. I was working on work the whole drive back trying to get stuff done. I had file folders. I was typing down addresses so I could get ready for some mailings. And so I worked the entire seven hours on the way back. So everything within me just wanted to say, boy, this has been a full day. But God, he sent his son Jesus that we can have life, that we can enjoy life. Have life, but enjoy life and have it more abundantly. I love uh, how it says in this scripture, uh, John 10.10 10, in the Amplified, it says, have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. You see, the overflow of life gives you that opportunity to enjoy just moments of your day, to embrace the day. Instead of saying, boy, I can't wait for this day to be over, you're instead choosing to embrace the adventure that that life has to offer. So let's wrap up with these points, just the highlights of what I covered tonight, because I don't want you to miss uh, some of these uh, fantastic um, just nuggets so that you can take them to, you know, maybe in your journal review later. Jesus, he's the best example to follow as you strive to live on purpose. Remember at the very beginning, he was on purpose. People were telling him to stay, but he knew he had to fulfill his purpose, and he stayed on purpose. Point number two, we all have choices to make, right? So, we could choose to be a people pleaser, I mean, that's a choice, or we can choose to please God. It's our choice to make. We have the free will to do so. Point number three, faith will take you to places where reason would not allow you to go. Faith will take you to places. You know, everything within me said, oh no, I gotta get that college degree. God knows me. I probably would have gone to my masters and beyond, beyond, beyond. God's plan in your mind may not make sense, but your heart is saying, go for it. Next point, give your life to that thing you are passion, passionate about doing. Now, see, the first couple years, I love my husband, but 
you know, he said, Cindy, I, I don't want you to get caught up with this whole church thing. I know you were in the ministry before we married. I know you were a youth pastor. You had singles ministry. I know you worked with kids. But you're an officer's wife now. You need to, you know, that's your, that's your role. And you're my wife. And I did that for about five years. But I'll tell you what, was I happy? No. Was our marriage doing okay? No. Because I wasn't happy. I was, I was depressed. Every time I came home, Pat says, are you preaching to me again? I'm like, babe, I need somebody to talk to. <laughs> I've only read the word, the word, the word. It just is coming out. And I remember, I mean, and this is why you got to stay on purpose. And I love my husband. He knew who I was. But I finally had gotten, uh, well, actually, I had an angelic visitation. And God... Uh, knew I needed something big and powerful to muster up the tell my husband what God had told me. But I had an angel that came into that room. I was praying, asking God, what am I here on this earth to do? I'm not happy. I'm frustrated. I don't even know who I am. I'm trying to be the daughter my parents need, the wife that my husband needs, the mother my kids need, but I do not know who I am. And in that place where I was broken and travailing before God, an angel came into that room and said, I have anointed you as a messenger of God. God says this, I have anointed you for ministry. I have called you, Isaiah 61. I have anointed you to set the captives free. He anointed my hands. I mean, they just burn. And even to this day, I can tell when his spirit is released, my hands burn as I pray for people. And he said, Cindy, you are called in the five-fold ministry. And I know that's not the norm to have women in ministry, but you are called by my name. And the anointing that's on your life will confirm the call that is on you. So, boy, did I pray on that some more. Because how was I going to tell Pat about this? But when you allow that enthusiasm when you allow that faith to take you to that place, when he says, follow me, he will work on it. So I told my husband what God had told me. He was in 29 Palms, so he had been gone for six weeks. And when I told him, God had already been stirring on his heart. He mm -hmm. said, Cindy, I knew, I knew it was wrong of me to put you in a box. Mm -hmm. And that was not my place to do. And God had been working on me, and I love, I love this man. He said, Cindy, I will go where you go. I will support you. I will back you. And he has had his opportunities to be my covering many a time, to be my defender, because it's, like I said, it's not common for women in that day. Now, today, it's a whole different world. But in that day, it was not common to have women in ministry. But as you seek his face, as you allow him to reveal the plans that he has for you, he will do just that. And my last point, the fact that Jesus died for you gives you infinite worth and value. And it's from that place you can begin to accept the gift that you are valuable. He has a plan and a purpose for you to fulfill. So seek it out. And when you seek you're going to find it. And if you're still not getting it, then ask, and it shall be given. And if you're still not getting it, then knock, and that door will be open. Why? He's not limited by your age. He's limited by you saying, I don't know if I can do this. But with him, all things are possible for those who believe. And you're believers, right? All of you in this room, all of you watching, you are believers. So I want to encourage you tonight. Be on purpose in all that he has. Be passionate in the plans that he has for you. And enjoy the journey because it's going to be an amazing uh, adventure. So just join the ride and experience the fun. Heavenly Father, I pray your blessings upon the word that went forth tonight. I pray that we are embracing this next season enjoying the, the way you're shifting things up because you always want us to be dependent and fully relying on you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks again, everybody. We'll see you next week.